Olá, eu sou o Miguel Cavalcante, do Man in the Arena. Estamos aqui no Case 2014 e agora a gente vai bater um papo com o Matt Wise, que foi o CEO do, da Hello World. E ele falou sobre os cinco segredos de como você é, vender sua empresa. Hello, uh, Matt. Very good to have you here. Oh, thanks for uh, having me. You talk about the five secrets to have an exit. Mm -hmm. And the first one was to have an adult yes. at the team. Uh, how would you describe what is an adult? It's well, it's uh, an adult when we talk about it in these terms is someone an investor can really latch on to as the most valuable person who is going to lead the company. So oftentimes there are smart people in the company, there are energetic people, great salespeople, and there's lots of people in the team that make a great company. But you need that one person that the investors can repeat. This person either is a great coder, this person is a great salesperson, and they're going to lead us to an outsized value and therefore justify a very high exit price. What's the, the, like, well, the youngest age of uh, an adult? No, it, it, it has nothing to do with age, <laughs> yeah, actually. Okay. So you could have a 13-year-old uh, a who was <laughs> you know, fantastically smart and, uh, and could code better than anybody else, and you'd say, that's what we're betting on. You could have someone like myself who's getting a few more gray hairs okay. who has already run a number of companies, successfully sold them, and they would say, we have faith that that person can do it again. So it can be either. But when you talk about like uh, being an adult, you are also talking about has a little bit of maturity mm -hmm. and be able to like not a lot of fluctuation on like emotions and be able to... Ideally, yes, because as an investor, uh, people are looking for companies that they can have faith in and that they know will grow. Because uh, for startups, it's wonderful that you've come up with an idea, wonderful that you've created something, but the investors are putting money in towards the future. So they have to know that the money that they're putting in is going to be somewhere where it's stable and it can continue to grow, and they want that to be shepherded or handled by someone mature and someone bright enough to do that. But again, it's But more said, about the maturity of the ideally, person ideally, yes, so than the age. Yes. Would you bet in a, in a, like a very, very smart person and a lot of like possibility to build a very strong uh, company but with a lot of fluctuation on humor and uh, well humor is good but let's <laughs> let's there are people there's always uh, when you build a team a sports team or any other team there are always people who are wonderful athletes um, we call them all-stars in America you have the all-star yes. athlete but if they can't work on the team the team never works out. And that becomes a bad investment for the investors. And the same thing happens in, in technology startups. If you have a person who's you know, wonderfully sharp but can't get along with the rest of his teammates, you know, people will steer away from that investment. Okay. This sec secret number two said there, uh, something like very, uh, in a way to easily describe your company. Mm -hmm. and, and what's your, like, favorite way to describe a company? How do you try to describe companies you found or invest? How, how would you teach people how to exercise, how to describe their companies and right. or their products? The, the, the best way to do it actually is to describe your company in 30 seconds or less to someone who is not in your field of study. So let's say you were creating a, um, a product for veterinarians and it was very technical. Go talk to your mother-in-law and ask them this, or tell them, this is what I create in 30 seconds. And if at the end of it they say, wow, that's a really neat product, or that's a really interesting product, and I understand what it is, you've probably succeeded. If at the end of it they say, I really don't understand what you've said, you've Question probably missed the point. Question mark face, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so we talk about keeping it simple, uh, keeping it short, and trying to mix both Uh, what the category, what the specialization is, and then a practical example of what it will do. So uh, earlier today we heard about an appetite suppressant. So it's a wonderful device that can be inserted in your body and suppress your appetite uh, through the release of, of electrical impulses. So I said that in 10 seconds, you understand what it is, you understand it suppresses your appetite so you can get thinner. Wow, that sounds interesting. Now the scientist behind it probably could say 10 more minutes worth of information. Wonderful, that's not in the elevator speech. You've got to keep that simple speech so that the investors can repeat it to their colleagues and get excited about it. 
And what do you think about using like other companies to describe yours? Like I'm Uber of something, this kind of thing. You can. Uh, it's not ideal because whenever you want to talk about your company, you want your uh, audience member to always be thinking about you and not somebody else. That said, there are some, you know, just huge brands like Uber is becoming, like Google is, um, that it just is very easy for people to draw an analogy to and a parallel to, and so that can help you out. But if it's a small company, it's a competitor, leave all of them out, just talk sure. about yourself. Secret number three, you said about be appealing. Mm -hmm. uh, appealing uh, depends on taste. What's appealing for you? Well, so it's appealing in the eyes of the buyer. So it's not appealing in general, because you're right, it's okay. different for every person. So what you have to learn, um, and it's kind of like dating, you have to understand what the other person likes. So if you're trying to sell to, um, to Google, you have to know what Google likes, and you what have to Google be appealing. Buys. Exactly, yes. what Google buys, and that's the key. So it's not truly what they like in those terms, sure. it is what they are interested in purchasing, what they're interested in investing in, um, and you need to position your company that way. An example. I once ran a company that did uh, distribution of coupons, and they called themselves a coupon company, and nobody wanted to buy them. The reality was the reason they were so good at distributing coupons online was they had developed a very advanced mathematical equation to predict what coupons a consumer wanted. So we changed the description of the business from a coupon business to an advanced mathematical algorithm to predict what consumers want in advertising. Then everybody wanted to buy it because that sounded really cool yes. and then people could apply that to advertising <laughs> networks, they could apply that to their newspaper sites, they all wanted into that. So that was an example of it was the same company, same technology underneath, but we changed the perception of how we were so we would appeal to our future buyers. So you need to mix the secrets two and three at the same time and be able to explain very easily and in 30 seconds or less uh, what the company are looking for at their buying Absolutely. decisions. Absolutely. And so if you, if you walk through all those pieces, we talk about you know, being able to say things quickly, then you need someone who can confidently say that, that was that adult, so that when the investor is looking at it, they say, I trust what that person is saying, what they're saying is simple and easy, and it's appealing to me as a buyer. Very good. Uh, I like this, those secrets. Uh, the secret number four is get your shit together. <laughs> and, and you talk about like dashboards and data and like follow, following what you said, mm -hmm. and walking, uh, walking talk. Yes. Um, what's the, what's, you, what's you on your dashboard? So uh, it's, a, it's an excellent question. Um, so we always talk about pick, creating a dashboard, the metrics to run your business in one page or less. And on that dashboard for my last business, for instance, we talked about how many products have we sold, how much revenue have we generated in a period, what was the gross margin on each one of those products, and how many future sales do we have in the pipeline. So we could very easily see where are we at today and where are we going in the future and is the value of the product going to generate the profits we want. When we talk about that phrase, we talk about being able to, because oftentimes entrepreneurs and, and young business people get so absorbed in their product and they get excited about it and they talk about all these different things in their product. And the investor says, okay, that's all wonderful, but bring me back to what are the basics of your business and how is it going to scale? So if you know how much money you make off of each product you sell, how many products you could eventually sell, and where you're at in that, in that slope. So today I'm selling 100 products a month. I could one day be selling 1 million products a month, and this is how we're getting there. It becomes very easy for an investor to say, I either believe that or I don't, and if I believe it, I can make an investment in it. And so that's what we talk about getting your shit together is getting those financial metrics together and being able to enunciate them simply and quickly. And when you do your dashboard, I, I like a lot to have like comparisons, like benchmarks, like last week, last mm -hmm. month. What usually do you use? So my, my personal dashboard, we generally use 12 months, a rolling 12 months, so not January to January, but okay, last if it's, 12 months. right, so I can look back in time, how do the last 12 months look, and then how do the forward 12 months look? And so I'm, I'm looking at a 24 month period and I'm able to compare what happened this June relative to last June. So okay. I have a period over period, but I can also see my trend. Hopefully those trends are traveling up and to the right in a nice pattern. 
Um, but if they go down, that can cause panic. But if I look back last year, like my last business was cyclical, meaning it traveled different. We generated different amounts of revenue and different amount of sales depending on the time of year. When it's holiday season, we sold a lot more. So in knowing that, I didn't panic in January when the numbers went down because I looked at last January and said yeah, yeah, the numbers yeah. were even lower. So you can start to follow those curves. Very nice. The last secret, secret number five is go make friends. And I like a lot of a book, a kind of old book called Love is the Killer Application mm -hmm. uh, from a guy from Yahoo from the years that Yahoo was really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, he said that the three secrets to success is knowledge, grow your knowledge, grow your networking, and the third one is like love people, like mm -hmm. uh, try to help people. And just three things together when you do the same all the time, everything, everything helps, works out. Works out. Uh, so how do you explain that go make friends? Like, because if you are only trying to make friends and like being very, very, very like friendly and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it doesn't work because uh, how, how do you explain right. that in an in a investing or exit strategy right. <laughs> way so of I, thinking? Right. So I might, um, I might use the word friends with quotation marks yes. around it because you're not actually trying to make lifelong friends deep, deep relationships. What you're trying to do is create an environment in which buyers, investment bankers, lawyers all know who you are and where your business is. Because too many startup companies and too many entrepreneurs think, don't think about the sales process until they're ready to sell the, sell the business. And then they rush in and try to sell the business, oftentimes to people who've never heard of them. So when we may say make friends, it's really make sure that the potential buyers know who you are. Make sure that they're talking about you and so that you are in that ecosystem. That's what we talked about a lot today is Brazil has a wonderful beginning of an ecosystem. And so each of those startup companies needs to say, part of my plan is to get into that ecosystem. Even though I'm not selling today, I'm going to sell in a year from now. I want the venture capitalist I saw yesterday to know I'm running a business so that when I call him in six months from now or 12 months from now, I can say, I met you at that wonderful conference in Sao Paulo. Remember that my business is growing. I'm going to call you again in six months and maybe we can talk about something then. That's what I mean about making friends. It's building that network and laying the groundwork as an entrepreneur for your future sale. When you make us, you, you sell your company, usually you met the guy who bought you how long before? Uh, so I usually look out 18 to 24 months um, and start laying that groundwork. Why? Because the first 12 months, I'm getting to know what they're interested in. The, generally, the first call that I make to a potential acquirer, I don't even say we're for sale. I generally say we're not for sale. Yes. I just want to tell you about our business. And more importantly, I want to know what you are interested in buying. They get to talk. They do most of the talking, but now they know who I am. I use that next year to make sure I'm positioning my company appropriately to sell to them eventually, or to know they're probably not a target for us, or perhaps to try to convince that person that they should be investing in this category. So maybe I send them uh, information on the industry and how big the category is and why we should be attractive. That's year one. Year two, you're starting to really start to dig into, are we on the radar? When are you going to be buying, et cetera. A sales process itself, at least in the United States, usually takes about three to six months from the time you say, we're definitely going to sell. You get an investment banker, you create your marketing materials, you go out to the market, you run an auction process, uh, you have a term sheet, then you have a purchase, and then you close the deal. That usually is about six months. It can be very short, it can be a month or two, but for your average company, it's longer, and you want to be started well out in advance of that. Very nice. If you could give a, like a small win uh, challenge that people could implement until next Friday to be able to be more appealing or more ready to, <laughs> to sell in the next 24 months, what would be the challenge you give to the people watching the movie? I would, I would give them the challenge to go reach out to five people who you think would be potential acquirers of your company and simply ask them what they're looking to buy. Don't talk about yourself that much. You can answer questions, but the key is to know your audience. Once you know that, then you can think about how you want to sell your business. Very good. Thank you very much. Matt Wise, former CEO of Hello World, giving the five secrets of how to have a good exit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.